And what is going on with eating? So if you have one meal and say this meal comprises uh, you know, 2,000 calories or whatever, and you have this meal at 6 p.m. and you fast for 24 hours until you eat again at 6 p.m., if you have this one meal a day, why is it better to do that than to have, say, you know, smaller meals of like 500 calories multiple times per day, little snacks? Well, because going back six million years back, you know, we're in the trees and then in the savanna, our bodies were designed, well, or evolved to respond to adversity. And we've removed that from our lives because it feels good. But we need adversity to be resilient and to fight disease. So what I'm saying is that period of hunger, and it's not even hunger these days. I don't even feel it. I feel great if, if I don't eat. And it, it takes a few weeks. So anyone wants to start, make, give it some time. Give it a couple of weeks. But what's happening in the body is you're turning on these adversity hormesis response genes. We call them longevity genes. And they make the body fight aging and diseases. And so by... By eating through the day, the traditional, oh, you got to have breakfast, best meal of the day, blah, blah, blah. Um, first of all, it's not true that you need to be full or fed to think clearly. It's, it's very clear that people who are fasting have as good, if not better, mental acuity. Okay, that's one. So I think that that needs to be thrown out the window. Kids are different. We're not talking about kids. We're talking about adults. And we're not talking about malnutrition or starvation too, let's be clear. But we are talking about lengthening that window of not eating. So if you always are, are satiated, fed, your body says, hey, I've just killed an, you know, a mammoth. No problem. Don't need to worry about survival. I'm just going to go forth and multiply and screw my long-term survival. Mm. So this is all about long-term survival by making the body freak out that there's tough times. And that's running away, like running away from a cat, like the savanna, and being hungry. Or it, you know, there's molecular reasons that all, all this works, but you know, trust me that the the data is very clear that this is the way to go if you want to be healthy in your 80s and 90s. Well, it, it it actually does make sense when you put it in that way that your body, when you're fed, relaxes, and so if you're just doing that all day long, and I know for a fact that when I am um, not fed and I go and do things, whether it's perform, one of the things that I've been doing um, is I don't eat before shows like I take many uh, many hours before a comedy show and I used to just like eat whenever I just eat and, and then I would do shows and I would have a, a meal like an hour before the show and I'm really trying to wake up I'm really trying to come on come on come on but I've now recognized actually I saw a video where Cat Williams was talking about this do you know what Cat Williams is hilarious comedian uh, I do know. Well, you're slipping if you don't. Uh, he's he's hilarious. When he was doing this interview and he was saying, they were telling, what's your process before a show? And one of the things is I don't eat. I make sure I don't eat. And I was like, that's wise. That's really smart. And I'm like, I needed to hear that even though I kind of knew it, but I'd never written it down. I'd never like associated it absolutely but now i have like now i do not eat before shows i won't do it unless i know i have three hours so what what's your average day look like it depends entirely <clears throat> on whether or not i'm doing podcasts if i'm doing podcasts generally i'm up early i get my workouts in i i uh, usually have something to eat after the workout so i'm talking about like i eat around 11 11 a.m that's my first meal of the day and then uh i go and do my stuff and I generally feel like my workouts are so strenuous that I need some sort of nutrition afterwards, some sort of uh, fruit to pump the muscles back up and give them some sugar and some protein. So usually I'm eating meat and maybe like an apple or something like that. That's like a normal meal for me. And then I don't eat again until nighttime. Great. And you're not snacking. No, yeah, maybe sometimes after a podcast I'll have like we have these uh, on it warrior bars that are just buffalo meat and some cranberries and stuff. I like those. I'll, I'll eat one of those. Good. Well, at least you're going till eleven. You got that sleep. Yeah. So you're probably not eating late. Yeah, it's just the stre strenuous activity. Me like ap my workouts are very hard. So after them, I feel like I need something. You know, I just, I don't like that feeling of like a brutal workout and then being starving for four or five hours because then it becomes a distraction. So I, I, I listen to my body, but if I don't work out, I don't eat until dinner. Like say a day like today, I didn't work out today. So I woke up, hung out with the dog, had some coffee, sat out, you know, like just got, went over some emails, did some shit, just a relaxed morning. 
and then rolled into here, no food. Perfect. I, won't, I won't eat until we're going to dinner tonight. I'll eat until then. Yeah, with yeah. Lex. That'll yes, be fun. Yes, that's going to be fun. And John Donner. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Looking great. forward to meeting yes. him. Yes. Uh, yeah, so you're, you're doing the right things, uh, certainly better than most people. Uh, but what I'm trying to build or make are molecules that mimic fasting as well. So if you cannot fast like I do, then you can just take a pill. And what we've shown in, in mice at least is that if you give them this molecule that I'm taking, NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, which as I mentioned, um, speeds up metabolism, does all that stuff. Those mice could run 50% further. These old mice, we gave it to them for three weeks, put them back on a treadmill, and those that had the NMN in their water ran 50% further. They had better blood flow, better oxygenation, better energy. And that is literally exercise in a pill. That's crazy. So we're, we're in late-stage human clinical trials now. When do you think this is going to be released to the public? Well, it depends on what the FDA does and if Those it works. Those motherfuckers. Oh, don't get me in trouble. <laughs> I love the FDA. Um, I but do it's fair, too. fair enough. They protect us. Yes. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going through the procedure that has been around since, as I mentioned, early 20th century. But it, we've done hundreds of people now, um, certainly dozens, over the last few years. And we know at least that this molecule is apparently safe and raises the levels of the molecule we want to build up. The molecule is called NAD. Do you want to talk a little bit about yes, NAD? Yes, please. So NAD is what mitoc those mitochondria, little uh, Mike and Ike, little uh, uh, energy-producing things, use to make energy. So you, you need there are two molecules in the body that are really great. You need both for life. And without them, as I said, you're dead. ATP is the energy, and NAD makes that. And as we get older, the levels of NAD go down. Our body makes less and actually also degrades it more. You have, so I, if you take my skin or in the study that they took people's skin. When you're 50, you've got half the levels of this NAD that you did than you did when you were 20, which is scary because this, this molecule is required for life. Without it, we're dead in 30 seconds. So what we're doing with our clinical trials is giving a precursor, a, a, a smaller version of this that the body will turn into NAD and bring those levels back up from where they are when you're old to where you are when you're young. And we, we see, at least in animals and hopefully in people, that it revs up their metabolism and makes them fight aging and disease like we do when we're young. I mean, there's a reason we don't get a lot of heart disease when we're young or Alzheimer's, because our bodies fight against disease as we get older, and especially if we sit around or smoke and don't exercise, our bodies just give up. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free, only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data costs all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.